Hello and welcome to this week's segment of Orange Line Sports. I'm Chris Smith alongside Alex Dingman. We're here at the Baker Tennis Courts. They're having a fantastic season. As a team, we're doing really well this, uh, this semester. Our goal at the beginning of the year was finishing the top two in the conference and we're sitting uh, right on that two or three spot right now. Uh, today we play William Jewell and it's our last, last match of the year before the conference tournament. So we win today, we've got a good shot at getting the two seed uh, unless Lindenwood, if they win out in conference, then they'll be the two seed and we'll be the three seed. So either way, we're looking to play Lindenwood uh, either the first or second round of the conference tournament and then hopefully uh, eventually getting to play Graceland in the finals and getting that shot at nationals. Uh, Usually, uh, with the Hack being such a competitive conference, they'll take the top two teams out of the conference to go to nationals. Uh, so if we can put up a fight against Graceland in the conference tournament, then we're looking to uh, get a shot to go to nationals, uh, which would be like the first weekend of May in Alabama, unfortunately. Uh, and then uh, Bo and I, we've actually got, we've gone undefeated this semester uh, at number one doubles. We beat Graceland, uh, Graceland's number one doubles team. They're uh, ranked number nine in the nation. So that's really good for us. We're hoping to get uh, the new rankings come out on Wednesday. So Bo and I are hoping to be ranked somewhere in like the top 15, top 20 doubles teams in the NAIA right now. Uh, we just put a lot of hard work into this season and Bruce has been doing a great job of working us out. I mean, it's uh, not very fortunate that we've got uh, a nice day on the last day of the season. I mean, too bad it hasn't been good enough weather the entire year, but hopefully we can get out there, get a win against Jewel, and then uh, we'll see what happens in the conference tournament. Baker's own Tanner Purdom, second Wildcat of his generation alongside Mike McCarthy to break into the National Football League. Absolutely, and I caught up with him a little bit earlier today. I never really thought about playing as a professional football player. I'd, I'd always planned on coaching. I had always planned on just, you know, going at the college level, coaching high school level, you know, whatever I could find. And uh, worked out with a few veterans, uh, Louis Aguiar, Kelly Goodburn. Played with the Chiefs there for a little while. Um, they, they worked with me some. They said, you know, if you gain some weight, you could probably do this. So I uh, gained some weight while I was working at Avila and working another part-time job and uh, going to school and get my master's all at once and, you know, just eating until I can't physically shove anything down and then working out four hours a day, coaching, going to work, going to class, and, and just staying dedicated. And once I got a chance to come back to Baker, I got more classes for the same amount of time, Bill got my master's in a year. Come back to a program I know, love, um, you know, love the coaches and love the kids and, and just love the town in general. I have a lot of fun and it put me in a comfort zone to where I could really excel and uh, work harder towards my goals and dreams and, and uh, go out to a couple combines every year. You know, got a few tryouts last year and then this year, right before I went out to another combine, you know, Chiefs called me and said, hey, would you like to come over and try out? Sure, and uh, you know it's right after not doing a whole lot, helped with recruiting and things, and and uh, they just said, hey, you know, why don't you uh, come over and work out? And we said, or I said, uh, you know, not a problem. You know, excited to do it. And the day before I flew out to Vegas to go to uh, the the pro combine for special teams and everything, they offered me a contract. So I said, yeah, and in a heartbeat, I'll be there in an hour. So. Signed it with that and just real happy that I could uh, have the opportunity and, uh, you know, somebody gives me the chance to do what I do and, and uh, have fun with it, so. Let's go to the Diamond now for some baseball talk. I uh, want to make sure we congratulate Stephen Stewart for last week. They announced he was the Hack Player of the Week two weeks ago, but that was released after our air date. So congratulations, Stephen Stewart. Check out these statistics, things. 440 batting average, two home runs. 840 slugging percentage. Yeah, and I drafted him the second round of my fantasy league, so nice. actually a steal. A steal. Yeah. Well done, Steven Stewart. However, since then, team on a bit of a down, 0-4 against William Jewell in their last series uh, on the road. But like I said, 14 and 21 overall in the season, 11-15 in the conference, still very much in the hunt. I believe that puts them in seventh in the half. Yeah, and they already have a couple more wins the entire uh, season last year, but obviously trying to get in postseason play because this team has shown that they can compete. You know, they, they knocked off a Mid-America team, William Jewell, very strong every year. They went 0-4, so now it's time here to really 
get back in. We got the great weather, so hopefully the bats will heat up and they can go on a winning streak here and set themselves up for postseason play. Certainly, when those bats are going there, a very dangerous team. Another team who's dangerous when they can hit the softball team, proving a complete 180 from last season. Uh, picked up its first sweep of the season. In fact, also an Orange Line reporter, Kelsey Epperson, a softball player for uh, Baker, said that this was the first sweep in her entire career at Baker. So congratulations to them for going out and killing Missouri Valley two games in a row. Amanda Phelps started on the hill, pitched a gym in the first game. They won that game 5-2. to two. And then Chelsea Taylor, who's coming off that knee injury, uh, pitched extremely well in the second game uh, to complete the nightcap. Had some drama at the end, though. They were up 5-1, to one, and then uh, Missouri Valley edged their way back in the game. Scoreless sixth inning, scoreless seventh inning, scoreless eighth inning as they were tied. Then in the bottom of the ninth, our very own Kelsey Epperson uh, knocks a walk-off double to win the game. So congratulations to the Lady Wildcats. Terrific season so far. Uh, they're also in the hunt. Yeah, Kelsey's clutch for us on the TV staff and also newspaper, and it looks like she's clutch on the diamond as well. So it's huge. The softball team with nearly four times as many wins as they had a year ago. So both teams look like they could be possibly having, well, already having better season last year, but possibly having uh, hopefully some postseason success as well. And we'll see if the softball team can continue their winning ways. Sure. So the spring's off to a great start. Um, we're now going to go to Dan Harris, who's just around his retirement a few weeks ago. He's one man that I know will be happy with the results this spring. Here's what he said about his retirement. This has been in a game plan for several years. Uh, I kind of uh, envisioned uh, 63 as, as my target year for uh, wanting to retire and I wanted to use uh, the next two or three years to do some things that I wanted to do in terms of travel, working for the national organization, maybe doing some other things uh, related to athletics in, in some way, uh, and then uh, settle more into total retirement around 66. So that's kind of my long range plan. It's going to be a challenge. I mean, uh, number one, a president is a full-time job, and Pat Long has, has inherited some uh, really difficult situations in, in getting our, our budget straightened out and in fighting the economy, and, and she's done a marvelous job of, of dealing with all of that. To add the duties of an AD will be uh, pretty difficult, but luckily we've got Teresa Yetmar here that can uh, carry a lot of that load. But one of the advantages I see of Pat Long serving in this capacity is to learn about the role of an AD, and what that will do is help her develop a really good job description for the next person to come in and sit behind this desk. Uh, to understand the nature of the responsibilities and the, the involvement at both at the national level, the conference level, and on the campus uh, will be uh, very valuable information for her to have. Back here at the tennis courts, the tennis team hoping to go to nationals. We wish them the best of luck. Also to the baseball, softball teams, track teams. We'll give you an update next week. Also, a big congratulations to Tanner Purdom. You know, he he saw the dream, he made it happen, he believed. Sounds, I believe I can fly. I think, I think the words might be there. R. Kelly, can we queue up R. Kelly? Tanner Purdom, congratulations. Other Baker players may be on their way to the league. If we can get Dorfler in there, maybe Mac Brown holding, we can just have the little pipeline, own the whole kickoff crew there for the Chiefs. There it is. Field goals galore. Thanks for tuning in. Back to you guys. And that's gonna wrap up this week's show. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm Zach Rocky. I'm Alex Ding. Was it good for you? It was great for it me. It was good for me. Always is. All right. We'll see you guys next week.